In the old days, when something broke, we fixed it. These days, it's more like we're in a fix. As David Pogue will explain, today's gadgets are either designed to be unfixable by the average person or by anyone at all. Last summer, fourth-generation California farmer Dave Alford showed me around his 2004 John Deere tractor. Oh, man, it's like a 747 cockpit over here. Right. Not your grandfather's tractor. It is not your grandfather's tractor. But it was this tractor that caused him grief during last year's planting season. I got in a tractor, and it, it throws an error code up, you know, in the readout. So I called my dealer. Hey, I'm in a bind, and they're busy, and they can't come, you know, just like that. He lost two days of farming time waiting for a repair. He'd much rather have just fixed the thing himself. In agriculture, we're kind of born, raised, and bred that we like to fix all of our own stuff, and that's about the only way, especially a small family farmer, can make a living. You don't think of a tractor as, as high tech as the you know, everything else that we have, but a tractor has a touch screen in it, it's got a computer. So Kyle Weens is the founder and CEO of iFixit. This is the new iPhone. A company that offers tools, parts, and repair manuals for thousands of gadgets. RAM upgrades, hard drive upgrades, you name it, we got it. There is a special screw on the iPhone that Apple put on there just to keep you out. Uh, it's a special five-pointed screw that no one <laughs> had seen before the iPhone. He says that the big electronics makers try to stop you from fixing your own stuff. The manufacturers are cutting off all the things that we need in order to fix things, shortening lifespans, and forcing us to go to them to just buy a new one rather than fixing what we already have. And why are they doing this? To increase their service revenues. They want to make as much money fixing things as possible. Maytag water. Believe it or not, there was a time when manufacturers advertised how long their products lasted. Side by side or stacked, every full size Maytag washer is built to last longer. But if this 2019 Microsoft laptop is any indication, this is the most difficult to disassemble laptop we have ever seen. Those days are over. There's absolutely no way to get this thing open without destroying the laptop and replace the battery. This is a disposable product. You use it for two years, you throw it away, you go and buy a new laptop. I don't like that. But like Weens doesn't just grumble. He's a leader of a national movement called Right to Repair. They want laws that would allow you to fix your own electronics, or at least take them to local independent repair shops, instead of forcing you to use the manufacturer's repair service. We're here today in strong opposition to... But at this 2019 hearing for a Massachusetts right to repair bill, a parade of industry representatives explained their objections. Allowing unfettered access to service information to untrained individuals will undermine the integrity of the equipment. Uh, this legislation has been filed in over 21 states and no state has passed this legislation and that's for a reason. And it's true. No state has yet passed a right to repair law. But the movement hasn't been a total bust. John Deere says that starting next year, it will offer repair manuals and other diagnostic tools for its tractors. And remember that unrepairable Microsoft laptop? Well, this year's models are not only far more repairable, but Microsoft actually touts their repairability as a desirable feature. Just like that, the top can simply come off. Last year, Apple launched its independent repair provider program, which offers authentic parts, tools, and training to independent repair shops. They were going to release this independent repair program, which I guess allowed for access to parts and manuals for independent repair shops. It seemed like just what Teresa McDonough had been hoping for. She runs a repair shop in Middlebury, Vermont, a state where there are no Apple stores. And how long does it take? Um, we'll probably need about an hour and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. But in the end, she didn't sign up for Apple's program. She found the requirements too invasive. Too much data collection, parts prices too high. Sometimes I wonder if it's a PR stunt more than it is actually helpful. In the meantime, Kyle Ween says the fight will go on. So this is a groundswell of people across the country saying, no, enough is enough. We're sick of throwing away things that are almost functional. Let's take the leap, let's fix them, and let's, let's push back on this throwaway culture.